So Garo did something, you know, today in this second episode that I feel as if a lot of shows as they struggle to do, which I'm happy to see this show did very, very, very well. They gave us a character arc, but they all, you know, they also gave us a character who means nothing to the show, means absolutely nothing to the show outside of telling us the sad truth. Once someone is a horror, they're not coming back. They're gone. They have to be killed, and that's it. There's no in between. They they cannot survive. Once they've been taken over by horror, it's it's done and over with. And we also do get to learn that horrors are really essentially just spiritual beings that possess people, right? That allow, you know, like I said in the first episode, to envy, greed, hatred, stuff like that, despair, it will t- take that and control you. But it's able to make us care about a character who got, you know, possessed by a horror that we don't even know we don't even know a single thing about him outside of he used to be an olympic track star and then he got hurt because he saved his sister and he could not run anymore he was not the same guy he was not he's an olympic track star everyone knew who he was he's a gold medalist we saw all of his awards and everything just got taken away from like that so we you know it's impressive how they made us actually be able to sympathize with him but i mean i'm interested to see what they'll do down the road because obviously they can't just use that route every single time right they've already used it once they they can't they cannot go back to that and I just I just thought it was very, very well done because it really, you know, it all correlated over to what the overall message of this this episode was. Someone who was, you know, selfless to someone who is selfish, aka Luke, the character that they introduced this episode. And Luke is a character that really has my interest because I guess he's you know, he's the he's a yang to swords yin, per se, right? And I like that because the way they presented it was was like really tasteful. It makes me want to see these two just go back and forth. It makes me want to wait and see Luke explode on sword finally, even though it's, you know, sword's just, he's just a ditz, you know? He's just really ditz. He just goes on his own, you know, merry way and so have it. So what has me interested about Luke is why is he taking this job about killing whores, but yet he's so, he's so heartless, you know? Because... Sword even states that he's like your style is just it's too heartless. I don't I don't like that. It's too heartless. It's like you don't even care. That's you know that's the overall point he's trying to get across in that sequence when he's telling Luke that, and it makes me wonder why did he take this job? Why is he helping people? Is it is it just for his own selfishness? Did someone do something to his family that was a whore, or did a whore I should say do something to his family? I don't know. I'm wondering why is he doing this job? Why is he killing his whores? Because because he's not doing it for them. He's just doing it to do it. Obviously, he has some kind of hatred towards them. So, you know, so I'm really interested about that, and that makes me want to know more about Sword, too. Like, why is Sword doing this? We're getting these character arcs, but I just want I want that next step to see why they're doing it. I'm also interested in the whole shoot the gun up in the air and make a magic circle and make people forget thing that Luke did in this episode with his gun. As we see, he's a gun specialist, but we'll get into that in a second. Um... He's making people forget what they saw, and that's something that you know is obviously interesting because it makes it makes everyone you know everyone who's watching the show realize this is like a hush hush kind of like organization. They don't want people knowing who they are. They don't want to. They don't want people to see Luke and or Sword transform to transform and or do the fights that they fight. Um, that's what that clearly you know demonstrates. And it doesn't even want them to know really what a horror is per se. And I'm wondering because Sword let let that girl remember. I don't know. Maybe she wasn't supposed to. Maybe she's not supposed to remember. But maybe because it seems as if there's something special about her. Maybe that's why she does remember. I, I don't know. Obviously, she's playing a uh, you know a huge a, a central role, right? She made, she's like one of the central ideas of the show because she's. You can see, go to my anime list. She's a she's main character. She's on the main main cast list and everything. And obviously, she, they would not just thrust her back into episode two. She's just supposed to be a you know just kind of like the setup to introduce Sword's character. She would not be there for that. So that's something that was really cool. I really did enjoy that, and it has me interested, right? So. Other than that, though, I really thought the gun scene with how Luke fights. He just flips the bullet up in the air, and he opens up his chamber, and it slides right in there, and he closes the chamber. I thought it was really badass. I like the music. I really like the animation in this you know, in this show. I feel as if you know, animation carries a lot of weight with it at times. Um, I didn't pay as much attention this episode for the weight, but it does still carry the, you know, that weight like... I like to see. I like to see my anime. I love to see that in my animation, especially. But um, other than that, I thought this was a great episode. You know, it's all around really good episode. They're just doing character introductions. I can't wait to see where the show goes after they do their character, inter- you know, introductions. Once we get a really strong horror, that's something that I'm looking forward to. And Gina, I mean, I saw her character design, and whew, 
Yeah, I, I like the merchandise. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> just kidding. But okay, no, I'm not. But um, <laughs> it looks like we're just going character by character. I can't remember how many characters we have. I think we got like three other characters after her. So yeah, I'm interested to see the personalities. I'm interested interested to see these characters work together and fight horrors. Maybe like a big a big baddie horror. And I'm interested to see where the show's going with the whole El Dorado thing. So other than that, guys, what did you guys think of this episode? I thought it was pretty damn good. It's one of my favorite shows this season for sure. And as always, guys, be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, follow me to X25. And if you guys like what I do here, check out my Patreon. And down in the description below. See you guys next time. Peace. Thanks for watching, guys.